Hi, I'm Spencer Christian. On this episode of Tracks Ahead, we'll visit a detailed version of the Union Pacific's Sherman Hill area. We'll stop by a reclaimed logging railroad in the shadow of Washington's Mount Rainier, and we'll talk with a man who's regarded by many as the best living railroad photographer. But first, let's head south of the border for a luxurious ride through one of the true wonders of nature, Mexico's Copper Canyon. It is longer than the Grand Canyon. It is wider than the Grand Canyon. And it is deeper than the Grand Canyon. In fact, you could fit almost four of them into the Copper Canyon. The vistas here rival anything you'll find anywhere. And unless you really want some serious exercise, the only way from end to end is by train. It was spectacular. Yeah. And, and yeah. As, as the cliffs almost got, became like statues, they, they were so rugged and, and all these sort of spiral jutting out as, as the formation, whether it's the water or whatever, but it, it, it was almost as though you were looking at a whole lot of statues going along with it. It was wonderful. It lies a couple hundred miles south of Tucson, Arizona. Trains Unlimited Tours runs charters through the rugged canyon several times each year. This is December in the Copper Canyon, or Barranca del Cobre. This winter means flowers are in bloom and the canyon is coated with varying shades of green. And since this is not the United States, all parts of the train are accessible. Riding the nose of the train or on the side of the engine is a rare experience not to be missed. From this vantage point, you get to see the canyon as it unfolds before you. While the sound of the powerful diesel is extreme, what strikes you is the gentle scent of flowers on the wind, not something you would ever experience cooped up in a passenger coach. It is a trip of a lifetime, but for some, once is just not enough. For some, the rail trip through the Copper Canyon is something personal and something to be revisited like a good friend. I first made this trip in 1966 on a two-car, rail diesel car train for 34 years. I waited to come back as, to see especially the Tamaris area. I'm back. The Tamaris Loop, or El Lazo, is a spectacle of engineering genius. For Lee Johnson, it was something he had to see again. The Loop is a 180-degree turn inside solid rock. It's just part of the 406-mile route that includes 86 tunnels and 37 bridges. The line starts out at about 49 feet above sea level at Los Mochis. At one point, it's 8,071 feet high. This is done with no cog and no switchbacks. It's all done by adhesion. It's quite a, quite a climb. He found out about this trip in Popular Mechanics magazine back in the 60s. The rail line was begun in the early 1870s. It took 90 years to complete. Originally, this line was meant to connect Topolobampo Bay in Sinaloa, Mexico with Topeka, Kansas. It would shorten the existing route from Kansas City to San Francisco by more than 400 miles. Today, the line is used by locals to get through the canyon, and it is a special destination for tourists. But do not think this trip is like heading out to places like Cancun or Cabo San Lucas. It's rough and basic once you get off the train. While there are some lovely hotels that cater to the tourist trade, Lee Johnson says he can't see many changes since he rode these rails in the 1960s. It's incredible, and these pictures cannot truly do it justice. And adjectives seem to fall short. It is a hard place to put into words. You can't. It's something you've got to see. It's wilderness, but until you see the rock formation, the flowers that are blooming along the way, you really can't give a person an idea. You film, camera film, video, will give you somewhat of an idea. But I, I think until you experience the ride, you really don't understand it. John Farley! John Farley. Morgans! Newmark! Sharrett! Schneider! Warren! Gobbler! And the family on the first bus! There are stops along the way. The Mirador Hotel is seemingly carved out of the canyon's rim. The view at sunrise is not to be missed. 
From this modern hotel, you can see homes of the Tarahumara Indians. They live simply in primitive conditions. Years ago, these natives had the chance to get electricity and fresh water run into their homes. They turned it down in order to keep living the old way. It's amazing their, um, their tenacity to live in that environment. All rail trips have a certain historic feel to them, the sense that you're traveling in an older, classic style. Riding through the Copper Canyon, there's the sensation that time has stopped and that you're locked in a different age. But I think this, what yeah. attracted us oh, to this yeah. holiday was that it was going to be real Mexico rather than the tourists, the beaches, which we, we're not beach people. And um, it was the thought of we were going to see a real part that hadn't been altered very much. Inside the cars, food is served in the grand tradition of the railroads. Fresh ingredients are cooked up by the chef below in the galley. And outside, through the domed windows, the canyon and all its wonders are your constant companion. At many of the stops, you'll find local crafts, but none of the crowds you normally associate with tourist stops like these. You'll also find music and native performances. Some of the stops along the route include old colonial villages like Serakawi at the edge of the Urique Canyon, the deepest part of the Copper Canyon system. This mission church dates back into the 15th century. Step into the cool quiet. The altar is still intact and dates back to the mid-1700s. The village was founded by Jesuits in 1694. Here, you get another glimpse and yet another version of life in and around the Copper Canyon. It is just a few miles by cliff-clinging bus ride to one of the most spectacular sites of the canyon. The Cerro del Gallego Urique lookout puts you at 7,500 feet. It is a breathtaking view. Nothing stands between you and the depths of the canyon. And you might think, Grand Canyon? Now this is a Grand Canyon. Eventually you roll out of the canyon and into the flat expanses of Mexico. Here the sky seems to stretch into infinity and the sunsets fill the frame of the train window with a portrait no artist could match. As the sun fades and you realize this trip is nearly over, you might realize that this is a trip you want to make again.